Sima possible. For showing me grace. Even when it's easier to get mad. For showing me the world as a wonderful place. Even when it's hard to understand. For showing me how to trust and be trusted. For showing me how to work hard and have fun. For setting the bar high, even though it's difficult to reach. For meeting me on my level and teaching me about your world. For showing me how to be strong but also how to be gentle. But most of all, thank you for showing me that even if I do all these things, they'll have the most meaning if I realize my worth in Jesus. You show me that I'm your son, but above all, I'm his. In Ephesians, uh, Paul writes, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And then in Deuteronomy, he says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders and write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Parents today, have the same assignments that they did back then, except they have this the redeemed method worked into all. And, and no longer do we just reproduce kids in the image of God just by having, having kids and just through childbirth. But we reproduce kids in the image of God by discipling our kids. The assignments are still the same. Multiply. Reproduce children in the image of God. That's our assignment to parents. Reproduce children in the image of God. And this happens uh, not just by telling them about God, but hopefully by introducing them to God. Uh, it's one thing to know about somebody. And it's something else entirely to know them. And this comes, uh, this multiplying the image of God in our kids' lives, it comes through giving them the gospel, teaching them the gospel, and, and, and leading them to Jesus. And then we fill the earth. The assignment's still the same. We still fill the earth by sending our kids out to take the gospel into the world. The thing about our kids, we don't get to keep them. They're, they're loaned to us. And so... We have, to, we have to take them. God entrust them to us. And we raise them up. And eventually, we give them back to the Lord. Hopefully to take his message out there. And hopefully not just to be disciples, but to be disciple makers. And so, we fill the earth by sending our kids forth. And then, third, to govern we send our kids out to be God's representative in the places and the situations that he chooses for them. Uh, to be his, his representative in their families, in their communities, in their workplaces, and to ensure that his will is done in those places. And then all of this is still done for God's glory. All of it's done for God's glory. So where does this bog down at, practically? Where does this bog down at? You know, I think, and I know from my 
myself that sometimes we get our priorities messed up. Uh, we, I, I believe our heart's in the right place, but sometimes we miss the most important thing. We, we want to give our kids a good education, so we try to get them into the best school. Not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Or we, we want them to be healthy. We want to encourage them into sports. We want them to be sociable. We want them to marry well. We want them to have a nice house and a great career and make plenty of money. We even want them to have good morals and be good citizens. And all of those things are good. But all of that together is the world's idea of success. Again, none of those things are bad. But I heard this preacher say, my greatest fear is that my child gets into a great college, lands a good job, marries a beautiful wife, has great kids and a nice home, has an awesome life, and then on that day stands lacking before a just and righteous God. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that messes me up. And that's heavy. Because I don't want to I don't want to blow this thing. You know, at the same time, if we look at that thing a little bit differently, it should be encouraging. You know, just because maybe I can't pay my kids way through college or I can't get them an Xbox 360 or give them guitar lessons or, or buy them the hippest clothes or, or because, just because I... I only have my kid part of the time because I'm, you know, I'm divorced or something like that. You know, I can still give my child Jesus. And that's the most important thing. So we should be encouraged by that. Now, if you're like me, the first thing you want to do when you hear that is disqualify yourself and go, you know, who am I to be able to take on something like that? You know, I'm... I'm jacked up myself, you know, or, or I don't know enough. Or I, I heard a brother say, he said, um, I pray for my kids because I'm their dad. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, you know, and that's where we go because this is, seems overwhelming if you think about taking this on by yourself. But, but be encouraged because I heard someone else say, that God can hit straight with a crooked stick. <clears throat> I love that. God can hit straight with a crooked stick. He knew what he was getting into when he gave you kids. He knew you were going to be their parent. And, and he doesn't abandon you in this thing. He, he comes alongside you. Um, God knows you're broken. And... And he knows your bent. He wants to use that so that he gets the glory, not you. Remember, all this is for his glory, not ours. So if he can take somebody broken and do good things, he gets the glory. Here's a quote I like. Uh, it says, Our sin sets the stage for his glory to be demonstrated in our homes. As we come to faith in Christ, as our kids come to faith in Christ, and as through your family, you reach neighbors, you reach people on ball teams, you reach friends, because your home is a platform for the gospel. So God knows our homes are broken. He knows they're messed up. And he uses that so that he gets glory. One of my favorite scriptures is in 2 Corinthians, and it says, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. And it makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. We're just jars of clay that hold this precious treasure that God's invested in us. And he gets the glory from that. God said he wouldn't leave us alone. You know, it's funny that in Ephesians, right before the verse that we just read a few minutes ago about, about being a good parent, uh, it also talks about there, it talks about being a good husband, being a good wife, uh, being a good parent, being a good child. Before all of that, right before all of that, he says, 
be filled with the Spirit. And I think he did that intentionally because he knows that without his Spirit in us and him enabling us, that we have no hope of accomplishing this thing. So he doesn't leave us alone. He gives us his Spirit to come alongside us in raising godly children in the image of God. One last quote, and this is a short one. If we want to see our families begin to get fixed, the simple answer is that family members need to come to faith in Christ. Love that. Really simple. So dads, moms, children, husbands, wives, the very best gift that you can give your family on this Father's Day is to come to faith in Jesus. That's the best gift you can give your family. I want to ask you all to bow your heads for just a moment. If there's anybody here who would, uh, who would like to give up doing things their own way and uh, turn in the other direction and and be reborn in the image of God by believing in Jesus and all he's done. Just ask that you raise your hand. I'd like to pray for you. And if you're sitting here and you just want to commit yourself to getting on board with what God's purpose is in your life, in your family, and in this world, then raise your hand because I'd like to pray for you too. And Father, we just we thank you on this Father's Day. We say Happy Father's Day to you because you're the ultimate, the first Father. And I just ask that you bless these hearts and that you would recreate us, Father, in the image of God, in your image. That we would be after your heart, that we would be your sons and daughters, that you would bless these who have raised their hands. Father, help us to find your purpose in our lives and in our families. Help us to get on board with what you're, you want to do with those places, Father. Help us to, to fill this earth, to multiply your image, Father, to govern, 